Well, 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 welcome back again to another episode here. This is Liz Surya, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump in into this hot, you know, topic right now, because uh, as we know, recently, uh, our President Biden has signed uh, the bill, um, and it's called the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022, or as, as we call it also, the IRA. Interesting, huh? <laughs> so in... And one of the most important things that I just want to kind of concentrate and consolidate, better to say, uh, what I believe is the most important, you know, aspects of the bill. Um, because number one, I'm going to start saying that I don't understand why they call it inflation, because I just think they use a fancy name uh, just to get this bill approved, really. Yes, they're supposed to help some way uh, to reduce our deficit. Um, but it will not, it will take more than 10 years, by the way, and maybe a reduction of about $174.75 billion. Uh, well, I guess we need to wait and see what's going to happen. But that's the only thing that's really supposedly reducing the inflation. But again, we're dealing about a decade from now. That's a long, long time. So let's go ahead and jump into the four most important aspects that I think that it really can apply to you directly, whether you're a business owner or whether you're an individual or you're both, okay? So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and separate this, like I said, in four segments. Number one, I'm going to talk about uh, what has been given, and I'm sharing here the screen. Hopefully you can see it. If you listen to the audio, that's fine too. But the whole deal here is that, you know, it, it, it expected to raise $737 billion, uh, so, you know, the government say, hey, I'm putting only 437 billions, um, and then that's supposed to reduce a deficit of 300 billions, but in reality, based on my research, it only shows it would be less than 175. So I don't know how they're coming out with that differential, but anyhow, let's suppose that that's the real number. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they they invest in 437 and they're expecting the ROI, the return uh, for this bill to pretty much almost double by 737. So let's quickly uh, look through here on um, their uh, breakdown that they provided us here in a chart. And, and as you can see right here, the number one thing I want to talk about that I think is so, so um, extremely important, it really has to do uh with the irs and here it is i'm highlighting in case the irs tax enforcement not sure guys if you really understand how how delicate this is but while they have provided 80 billion dollars that's right with the big b 80 billion dollars to internal revenue services where they're going to be able now to acquire and hire new agents that's right, by a whopping number of about 45,000 plus agents. So what does this mean to you? Well, a lot. It means number one, that as a small business or as a sole proprietorship, or maybe you're an independent contractor, okay, this is gonna affect you a lot. And even if you're an employee, that's right. Because if you do have a little side gig or side business and you're doing your 1099s and reporting that income, guess what? Now they're going to start auditing a lot more. Now they have a lot, hundreds of new agents that it's going to have the opportunity, not to mention that they probably implemented a lot of money also in artificial um, intelligence software. Okay, as it is for the last decade, I tell you this because yes, I am a tax advisor and I'm registered with Internal Revenue Services for more than probably 17 years. That's right. And I'm also a proactive accountant. So I feel I'm in a position that can really share this information because it's concerning to me and for my clients. And I want you to be prepared for this. From now on, please, <laughs> this is going to get really, really serious. I mean, there are, once this start training these agents okay could take in the next maybe couple months only uh because i can assure you they are expediting this process remember they say hey i'm getting 80 billion dollars and in return i'm giving to the government 124 billion dollars that's right so what they pretty much told the government the president hey give me this 80 billions and i'm gonna make that 
an, a return of your investment from 124. Where do you think that money is going to come from? From taxpayers, of course. So guess what? Please be cautious now more than ever. I know that since COVID 2020, everybody has been very laid back. A lot of things have kind of fall between the cracks. You know what I mean by that? So what's happening is a lot of things they were just sliding and letting go. And maybe you thought, oh, they didn't catch me because I didn't report this. Or maybe I forgot. Or maybe I didn't want to. Now they're going to have the staff to actually keep an eye. So again, I don't know how much I can emphasize this, but this is so, so important. I can see the, the audits increasing drastically in the next couple of years. Remember, they got $80 billion and they need to show proof that they can actually convert and double that money to make, make it back to the government, right? So again, cautious, cautious, especially how you're reporting your 1099s, how you're deducting your taxes. Uh, please be cautious. I really have to emphasize this because like I said, I've seen already a lot of people making mistakes years ago and now it's going to get a lot worse. Okay. So this is the first thing I want to get started. And like I said, I'm going to go into different segments. The next one I want to talk about is really the Affordable Care Act. Now I'm really happy that they have been able to actually, and I'm looking down on my list here with my notes. Uh, I don't want to miss any other to this point because like I said, this is point two Affordable Care Act. I think this is fantastic that they actually extended this. We really needed the help. And I can show you here on the article that I'm looking at. By the way, if you're interested in reading the entire article, it's from um, um, Invest, um, uh, Invest Opedia. Yeah, Invest Opedia, if I'm pronouncing that correct. A dot com slash inflation reduction act. Okay. Um, the most important thing about this is that because they extended the marketplace for all of you who are maybe independent contractors also, maybe you have your business and you can still qualify for it, right? What's important, as you can see right here, is that they have extended the program for three more years through 2025. Fantastic. I think this is something uh, that we really, really need um, in this country. Again, we're, we're dealing with very big health insurance companies that are, are really ripping off everyone because, well, unfortunately, as we know, uh, they have to, uh, you know, uh, benefit the shareholders that they have. And I think this is about time that, you know, the government steps in and do things like this. So I'm glad that they extended it. I know a lot of people depend on this. So I think that's phenomenal. And I also have heard that, and you can click actually in this article, and it will give you, I think, much more um, detailed information about, you know, what, who's eligible and everything else. Now, this was signed way back in 2010, okay? Uh, what, you know, we had Obama as a former president at that time. And I, I can tell you, I mean, this has covered health insurance to millions of uninsured Americans. So I, I, I think this was one of the best things that personally, whether you're in the red side or you're in the blue side, a politician, doesn't matter. I think it has benefited a lot of us and it really has helped a lot. So I'm glad to see this was a very positive thing. So yes, it's been extended again for three years. And I also have heard that they also have reduced their, what they call poverty uh, percentage. So maybe if you didn't qualify, you know, a year, two years ago, maybe you might qualify now. So again, I will say go in, fill out your application and see what kind of credit you can get. And if you do, great, uh, please take advantage, right? So let's go back to the third um, uh, section that I want to cover. And this is going to be the Medicare negotiation. And I think this is something also that, um, you know, people who are retired or people who have, you know, um, what they call supplemental income. Um, also, sometimes they have the Medicare and the Medicaid both at the same time. But the Medicare thing is wonderful. As it says here, prescription drug pricing reform. The bill allows Medicare to negotiate prices for some drugs for the first time. This is a policy that Democrats have attempted to enact. And obviously, they have had a lot of objections from the pharmaceutical industry. Well, we know why, right? Yeah. Uh, so for many years, uh, that's been the truth. So right now, I think that this is going to, supposedly, it's going to save them over $265 billion. But what does this really mean to you, right? Not to the government. Well, it means 
that hopefully Medicare is going to be able to lower the price. But listen to this. This is the catch-22 that I'm not sure why they are not implementing this as of 2023. Why are they waiting until 2026? Listen to this. This is not going to start happening into 2026. And the high cost of some drugs, which is going to only be to lower 10 high cost drugs for the beginning of 2026. And then after that, it will jump to 20 drugs by 2029. Now, my concern with that again is how long, how many years is going to take and how many, which, you know, uh, prescriptions are going to be the ones that are going to be able to negotiate. So I, I really feel like they got really, uh, it was not extended and it was not detailed as it really was needed to truly benefit people who are spending a lot of money in their prescription because of health issues. Um, no, I think the 26 should have been strong in 23. That's just my opinion. And I express my opinion quite often. It gets me in trouble, <laughs> but that's who I am. And I really believe that this ceiling of negotiation had been way more, you know, higher um, and, and not so limited uh, for almost, you know, so many years by the time they can reach, you know, a very long list of drugs. So I'm not very, you know, satisfied with with just the limitations that they have approved within the Medicare. And then finally, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the fourth one, which I think is so applicable, and it's the student debt forgiveness. So again, if you do have a debt, finally, we know that since March of 2020, you have not been paying your student loans. Um and because of that, your interest was zero. So there was no accrued interest during that period either. However, get ready because the news is starting on January 23, you will need to start resuming your uh, monthly payments. And I know some of you uh, students have over $50,000 minimal or more because obviously college and special university has really more than triple digit, you know, their numbers. Uh, when it comes to the trimester, you know, uh, uh, fees. Um, unfortunately, that's something else. I think in the future, also the government will probably need to get some implications involved to help students like yourself, because I think people are paying a lot of more money. Uh, people could graduate with a bachelor's degree 20 years ago, and maybe the most that they will owe would be under $40,000. That same bachelor now could cost $60,000. It could cost $70,000, right? And not to mention that you're not going to a prime university, a top brand, right? As I call it, whether it's Harbor or MTI or whatever other famous one, because there you're going to pay an arm and a leg just because you're paying for the name, right? So $10,000 forgiveness, this is only applicable again, for the federal uh, portion, okay? And 20,000, as I'm looking down here, my notes for the Pell Grant. Now, uh, what is it? Like I said, you have, if you, your gross income as a single individual, you have under 125. So $125,000, you'd be eligible to get that 10,000 forgiven, or like I said, the 20 Pell Grant. Now, if you're married, finally joining, it will be 250, all right? Now, again, I know that most of the students owe more than $50,000. At least it's some sort of relief better than nothing. Hopefully you agree with me on that one. So I hope that really that more, more you know, help comes for students like you, because I know some of you already have finished your, your college or university and you're still paying this. So get ready because like I said again, I don't mean to repeat myself, but starting in January, they're going to start sending you the letters. They want to start collecting, again, your, your student loan payments. And again, I do know from many other students that I know that they pay an average of $300 and above per month. Um, so anyhow, I hope this has helped you in some way. Uh, in a nutshell, this is what I'm trying to do. Um, it's create really um, financial updates and tips, okay, under 10 minutes um in a nutshell and again if you haven't seen i might be breaking down even more information if you have any feedback you want to leave any comments let me know and like i said i will be seeing you in the next episode i'm coming out with a lot of financial also tips and how 
to invest your money as we're going through a recession. I know times are tough out there. So stay tuned to my channel, like, share, and subscribe. And once again, this is Liz Soria. I am a proactive accountant and also a tax advisor. Thank you so much. And I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.